Regional Dispatch. I need somebody to come over and go wellness check. The first sign of concern came from a call to Regional Dispatch. A worried caller unable to find his family at a home on Burley Avenue in Dayton. Do you think something happened? I'm not sure. I just opened the door and just screamed everybody's name. No one's answering. Dayton police responded just before noon. That's when they found a woman and young girl dead inside the home. Major Jason Hall says DPD's homicide unit was immediately called in, and police believe a firearm was involved. It's not common that a welfare check results in, uh, in this type of situation. The 911 caller told the dispatcher there may have been an argument at the Burley Avenue home the night before. My granddaughter said the police were here last night, so that's why I'm worried. The dispatcher says police were called to that address. Hall says DPD will be checking into any prior calls to the house. We are in the initial stages. Uh, once again, that will be part of the uh, the investigation into what has what had occurred in this tragic incident. It's sad to come home and see this. One neighbor says while he didn't know the people who lived there very well, they were quiet. But I might have expected it somewhere else, but not not like literally right across the street and not from them. This is the murder of Aisha Nielsen. Aisha Nielsen was born on January 4th, 1991 in Newark, New Jersey. To Keely Nielsen. Aisha Nielsen first called 911 on June 22nd, 2022, around 5.30 p.m. to ask authorities how to file a police report. She said her boyfriend, Waverly Hayes, threatened to kill her. According to reports cited in the Montgomery County Regional Dispatch records, she states, he does have possession of a gun that I purchased. He did take it, and I didn't make a big fuss about it, but he threatened my life. He has the means to do it, Nielsen reportedly told the dispatcher. The dispatcher told Aisha to go to her local station and then call authorities again so that an officer could take down her report. The dispatcher also reportedly informed Aisha about local shelter that she and her daughter could seek refuge. Aisha called back hours later on June 23rd Shirley after midnight reportedly asked an officer to meet her at a family dollar so she could file a police report. She added that she did not want her boyfriend arrested. However, according to WKEF TV, the dispatcher call state, I don't want him arrested. I just want to make a report, you know, just in case something does happen because I'm going to protect myself. Aisha called authorities another 20 minutes later expressing concern that all available authorities were seen rushing to another scene, according to the report. In that call, she stated, I do know that they all went to a call. As far as like how long it may be that they're on that call, I don't know because I just don't know any details. The dispatcher reportedly told Aisha when she called back. Aisha then told the dispatcher she didn't want to wait too long because her daughter was waiting in the car. Aisha later told the dispatcher, at least you all have my calls recorded. I don't know what else to do. I do realize that Dayton does have a shortage of police officers, Aisha told dispatchers. Aisha told dispatcher not to send authority to her house without calling her first because she didn't want to upset her boyfriend, the report stated. Waverly Hayes, Aisha boyfriend, then called authorities around 1.30 a.m. saying, my girlfriend is acting crazy, torn up the house. I just want her to get out of the house. I don't want no problems. Police respond around 1.40 a.m and left an hour later and no reports were filed, nor were there any arrests made. According to the report, Nisa reportedly said she was unable to leave because she was financially stuck. He made it 
to where I can't get a credit card, to where I can't go to the hotel. I'm not getting out, Nilsson told police that night. He reportedly told her, you're going to be gone when I get back. Then Aisha showed authorities a video of her boyfriend threatening her. In the video, he stated, you need to get out of my house. Hayes said to Aisha, then she refused. I bet you are. If either that or the alternative, you don't want it. Body camera footage of by WKEF TV shows officers debating whether they could charge Hayes. It would be a stretch, Officer Catherine Santos said, according to the WKEF. We could articulate it as domestic threats and take him to jail, but I don't think it's a threat, Officer Terrell Moore responded. Santos said Aisha clearly didn't believe Hayes was threatening her because she would not still be there, sitting in the same house with her kid. Authority believe Hayes fatally shot Nilsa and her daughter about an hour later. Hayes himself was later found dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound in Alabama, according to reports. This is such a tragedy. In the body camera footage, the officers clearly, over and over again, expressed to Aisha that she needed to seek refuge. She needed to go to the shelter, irregardless if she paid rent at Hayes house or not because it was his family house and it did not belong to her. She was not his wife so therefore it would be best for her to protect her daughter and herself by seeking refuge at a shelter. Aisha then goes on and on to plead her case of why she should stay in the house and why she should not leave and the rights that she had as a tenant causing the police to leave and tell them to separate on different places in the house. Obviously that did not last for long because hours after the police then left, the two began to fight over a video game that escalated into Hayes shooting Aisha. Months later, Waverly Hayes would shoot Aisha's daughter. Waverly Hayes' daughter was also there, but she was found in the house somewhere safe and was not hurt during the incident at all. Aisha's daughter, Arper, was just six years old. And it's so sad that she had to be caught in this kind of dysfunction and toxicity that was created between her mother and her stepfather. It was so not worth it to stick around. It would be the best choice for her to go to the shelter and seek refuge for she and her daughter. It was obviously that Waverly Hayes was unstable and he had past incident of mental issues and domestic violence with his ex-girlfriend. Aisha was aware of this also. Maybe she thought, like many other victims, that he wouldn't actually do it to her. But most times, they will do it to you. You see, life is too precious to even take that risk. It's even more so too risky if a young child is involved because they cannot help the circumstances or the surroundings that they are in. While researching this story, my only wish was that Aisha would have went back in time or could have gone back in time and seek refuge like the dispatcher advised her to, like the police advised her to. Because clearly this man was on inch and was just ready to explode at any given time. My prayers and condolences go out to Harper's father who was left behind and it lost his baby girl. My praise and condolences also go to Aisha, family, her mother and sister that she left behind. May their soul forever rest in peace and light shine upon their grave. Until next time on the Meaningful Talk Crime Doc, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch up with you guys later in the comment section.